and we all know college is expensive. It's a scam. It really is. You're, it's it's so much money you're spending. But <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sierra, and today I'll be doing college advice for specifically for incoming freshmen because I know people don't tell you this or it's not talked about much because it's it's just like a it's like not a popular topic. So I'll be giving like advice for um, incoming freshmen so you can like honestly feel more comfortable with going to college. So before we get into this video. Um, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Right, first one is know your college, know your know your college campus. Now to say this, like if you all don't know, I go to Mississippi State, and like the, the campus is big, or it's one like it's it's a big campus to some people. And to know your campus, I would say if you're new, if you've never been to the school before, if you've never toured, um, I would say at least the day before, or at least a few days before class starts. Walk around the campus and like, with your schedule and like, go to the buildings your classes are in. Um, get to know where everything is because if you don't, the first day of class is gonna be like a living hill. Because it's over what, 15 to 20,000 kids walking around campus trying to get to their place and you're gonna be lost. And then most times they take roll the first day. They take roll and it's like, if you don't come to class, they're pretty much gonna boot you out the class because there are people that's waiting for this class or on the waiting list to see if someone's gonna drop or whatever. So, first thing I would say is know your campus and be honestly get to class on time so you can get the seat you want. Because if you if you come late to class, you're gonna have to like I don't know, it's, you're gonna have trouble finding a seat. So, get to class on time and also parking. Parking is like I don't even know. Parking is like horrible. So, if you have 8 o'clock class, please be get there by at least 7, 7.30. Because if you don't, you're going to, I don't know, it's going to be a struggle to find parking. And also, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock is worse. So, if you have an 11 o'clock class, I would say at least get to campus by 10. So, you can have like 30 minutes to find a park if it, because, I mean, parking is terrible on college campuses. So, when you get there, um, you will have... 30 minutes to search for a park, and then the other 30 to just chill and get to class on time. Number two, keep up with your academics. Um, also, keep, keep it up with, uh, I can't talk today. Keep up with your academics, which pretty much means maintain good grades because you also keep in mind that there is financial aid, scholarships, all that can be taken from you because if you have a low grade average, like I had a scholarship my freshman year that had to be at least a 3.5 GPA to keep the scholarship. So keep in mind what your scholarship or financial aid, um, the requirements are for the, like grade wise, because if you don't know and you flunk out the first semester, that's money that you could have, free money you could have had that could have been used like on school instead of having to take out extra loans and stuff because that's free money you just wasted. Relationships and friendships. Now, we all had we all have friends from high school, relationships from high school, or back at home. But when you come to college, it's gonna be different because let's say you, you you're moving from you're moving to college far away, or it's it's not in the same town as it, like, that you're from. So for this, I would say I wouldn't necessarily say boot them, like kick them to the door or something. But you're gonna meet new friends. You're gonna meet other people. So, just keep in mind that you have friends at home as well, but communicate is key because I had I had a friend at the time that we were best friends in high school, and then when I got to college, it was just, I don't know, it's like we fell off, kind of, and then I was also in a relationship at the time, and she felt that, I don't know, it's just, friendships and relationships kind of crisscross with each other, so it's hard to have a friendship and relationship at the same time because they feel like you're not spending more time with them, as you are in a relationship and vice versa. It's like, they want you all the time, but it's hard to split your yourself and your time between the two. So, I don't know, I would advise 
I, don't, I didn't say nothing's wrong with having a relationship, but it's going to take a lot of effort, if you know what I'm saying. It takes effort to keep them going. Next one is roommates. Now, I didn't, now at least, now I had a roommate my freshman year. We met, it was like we were in a group meet or whatever for like upcoming freshmen for the college. So we met in a group, in a group meet and we talked like every day. We had planned out what our room was gonna be, the color schemes, how it's gonna be decorated, all this. So we get to college in July, cause you know, I started this program, it was called College Ready. It's pretty much like you come in in July and start taking classes. So I got in and we were cool, we were close, but it's like some things starting to irritate me and vice versa. And then by September we fell out, she went to the RA which is like the resident advisor on the hall. So pretty much she went to the RA and snitched or made up this false accusation about me. So we had like a meeting with the RA and the RD, which is the resident director. So we ended up falling out and we didn't talk from September until December until she moved out because she, I don't know what happened to her. She just moved out, but she's not, she's not here anymore. But we pretty much had it out, but when choosing a roommate, I would say choose somebody you're comfortable with and that you feel like, I don't know, it's, pretty, it's kind of hard to choose a roommate that you feel like that's going to be like your best friend, but you don't have to be best friends with your, with your roommate, but at least be cordial. Like the thing about us, we were, oh, I guess we were overly doing it, we got tired of each other quick, so I would at least like be cordial with your roommate because I had, because we didn't talk, we were like, it was just beef, like. You could walk in the dorm room and just feel like the tension up to here, like, we did not get along. But with roommates, just find somebody that's cordial, that's, that's somewhat similar to you because you don't want to have, like, for instance, you're a chill girl and you study all the time. And yeah, your roommate's like a party girl, it's always partying, always out. Like, y'all don't really click. So, that's one thing I would say about being a roommate. But make sure you find somebody that you're comfortable with 24-7. The next one is get to know your professors. Now, going to a big university is really, it's really challenging because there are classes that are like between 20 something to like 500 plus. So being in a class that big is kind of hard to get to know your professor. But if you take the time to go to their office hours and actually take time to study, they will get to know you on like a personal level, I guess personal level. So. You never know at the end of the semester, you may need like a point or half a point to get to an A. They might just end up bumping you up because you've been there, they, it's like y'all have a bond. Y'all have created a bond over the, over the semester. So they may end up bumping you up to an A because, oh, she came to my office hours, she came and got help. She asked questions, she was always attentive. So, knowing your professor does a lot and it's beneficial in the end because you may need that one-on-one -on -one help. Like, not everybody can, not everybody is, is um, not everybody can understand curriculum that easy. So getting to know your professor and meeting with them at office hours is really key. The next one is budgeting. Now, most kids are used to having jobs back at home in high school, but once you go to college, it's really hard because if you don't have a job, you're pretty much depending on your parents or financial aid, like your refund check. Now, personally, me, I, I have a job. I had one since I was a freshman on campus. So, I would say budget wisely because if you're getting a refund check that's pretty, it's a nice refund check and you need to pay, like you're living, you're paying for your rent or whatever, pay your rent off first because at least at least pay it off for, to, that, to the end of that semester or beginning of the next semester because you never know what may happen. Like, if financial aid slips and doesn't get your, refund check for the next semester and you'll have at least some cushions so first thing I would do with budgeting wise is please pay your rent up at least months up just in case and then second I mean we all know shopping is like for everybody so I'm a shopaholic myself so budget wisely because you never know what you may need buy your books in advance um, access codes I know they're expensive but you need your access codes because most times that's what teachers go through to do like your homework, you know, quizzes and stuff like that. So that's another tip. Be mindful of your actions. Now, social media. We all love social media, Snapchat, Instagram. Yes, but 
at the same time, whatever you post reflects on you. So I have I've had videos from my freshman year that I kind of wish I didn't post. Simply because you have the college watching you, everybody's watching you, people at home's watching you, your college friends are watching you, and it follows you everywhere. Like, for instance, when you get when you graduate, you find a job, it's they're gonna look at your social media. Like they're gonna they're gonna see what they can find, pull up from your name. So be mindful of what you post on social media and also off social media, what you like in person. Just watch what you do because whatever you do follows you in the future. Make a calendar. Make a planner. So once you get to college, you start class, you're joining organizations, you're you're in sports, or whatever it may be, your schedule is gonna become hectic because you have class from let's say 8 to 12 you have a club meeting at 2 o'clock you meet your friend for lunch you have to meet your friend for uh, you have to meet your friend for lunch at you know 12 o'clock 1 o'clock it's like you're gonna be so hectic you're gonna forget some stuff so you also need to make sure that you're organized because most times most times quizzes homeworks whatever it is tests I pretty much do it at 11.59, 11.59 at night. So, to be organized, I would say get a planner, get a calendar, and keep track of, like, everything you have to do for that day, you know, so on. Next, apply for scholarships. Please apply for scholarships. It's free money. You could be saving less loan money to take out. It's just, it's honestly, it's nice to have a scholarship because it's less you have to owe back in the long run. Now, like I said earlier with scholarships, they do have requirements for that scholarship. Um, grade point average. What's the other one? I think that's about it. Grade point average is your GPA, keeping it up to that whatever they require. Some may require 1.5, some are 2.5, some are 3.5. Just make sure you know that requirement and you don't lose that money because that is free money you could be saving. And we all know college is expensive. It's a scam. It really is. It's it's so much money you're spending but in the end it's so worth it so please give stops please do scholarships okay the last one is don't forget why you came to school now we all come to school for a degree whether it's associates bachelors masters doctorates etc we all come for one thing so please don't forget why you're there why you're there at school um partying is okay partying out hanging with friends is okay but make sure you get your schoolwork done first because if not, it's like you've wasted your money, thousands of dollars at that. Just partying, flunking out. Because I know people personally, my freshman year, we were, it was a big group of us. I know for a fact, three people I know did not come back sophomore year because they chose to play around, took it as a joke. They just didn't care. Like, they were just careless. They thought that grades were going to make themselves. Like, you were going to make good grades. It doesn't, you have to put... You actually have to apply yourself in college to get what you want. Like it's not a give, it's not a hand me, hand me thing. It's like you get what you you get what you get out of it. If that makes sense. Like it's up to you. So please um, don't forget why you came to school because it's wasting money. So that was it for this video. Um, I hope I helped some upcoming freshmen or people that's probably in college now. I hope I helped you uh, helped you guys. Um, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. So that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.